showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. Nice knock. <laughs> this series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. This is a heavy 80 pound gear. You just winch them in. It brings the school right up to the boat, get them in fast, make them right there at the, at the top. And a lot of times folks are, hey, my fish is here, my fish is here. I'm worried about the next one. So the most important one's the next one. Keep him there. You gotta still kind of watch him, make sure he's not throwing the hook or anything or pulling his head out of the water. But once we get maybe another one hooked up or get some bait in the water, then we'll come get that one. Always foggy lately. We've had a couple days without fog, but I've been running in the fog for weeks now. That smoke makes it foggier. Hey, Go for Liberty Gun. Are you guys already out there? Buddy, but I am here with Mr. Koski at the Battle of Koski Dock. Hi, buddy. See you out there. Not if I see you first. Let me go. <laughs> all right, Kevin's all set. We're all baited up. Ten scoops of bait. Let's go get some tuna. Boy, boys, it opens up on the bar. It's not bad, and uh, we'll see you all out there. Thank you, Mr. Van Essen. I appreciate that. You guys have a great day. Well, I just got some information from some good friends of mine that got off the dock and are out there on the river saying that it's not as foggy on the south side of the channel and that it's opening up, which is good news for us because it would be a long, slow ride in these conditions. Okay, number four and five will be the longs on these on the riggers, right? So the longs live towards the back of the boat, and then they're going to obviously go out on the long side. Um, most of these reels, less one, there's a, a full, a strike, and a free. We're going to let the line out obviously on free. We're going to fish them on strike. We're never going to put these on full. We don't want them on full. And if we can make adjustments, the most important thing is getting it out. You're gonna hear me say, capture the line. What I mean by that is to have a good grasp of that. Capture this line, put the rod in the holder, and then walk it back. Got it? Just got it off the tips of my fingers because if a tuna grabbed it right now and I'm holding it like that, I'm gonna get cut. Yeah, but it's just on the tips of my fingers. This thing goes in here. Press it down. You got that long, Cody? Then you run it out. 
Yep, yeah, then just start running it up. Got it just like that, yep. So if the troll gear goes off, we don't want to get to it prematurely. A lot of times where there's one, there's two, three, four or more, we're trying to go for those doubles and triples. So we're kind of wait till Kevin says, get them. So let's pretend for a moment that that short went off over there and then we we're going to clear gear. What we do is rather than grabbing the rods out, we just reel them in place. So you want to uh, be aware. So this would be the short fish on, fish on right there. Okay, let me line up for me. This is what we call a peanut because he's small in size but big in spirit. <laughs> Welcome to the tuna grounds. I absolutely love coming out here and the reason why is because we leave the Pacific coast of Oregon and Washington and we end up out here in Hawaii. We're 60 miles offshore, the water is blue, you can see down 20, 30 feet, and we're catching tuna right here off the Oregon and Washington coast. Most people wouldn't even think about doing something like this, but this is one of my favorite fisheries that we have access to, and right now the conditions are about perfect. We've got a little bit of wind chop, which hopefully will bring the tuna up higher in the water column. It's nice and calm, there's only probably three, four foot swells out here. It's a beautiful day to be on the Pacific Ocean. Kevin's got us all lined up here with all sorts of different gear. We're fishing surface lures, which are called clones. We have an x wrap which is diving down underneath. We have two fish field swim baits that are out. We have the entire water column covered. Now these fish are what's considered pelagic, which means that they feed in the upper part of the water column. So we're just gonna be trolling around here at six to eight miles an hour, pretty fast, especially when you consider how slow we troll for say kokanee or salmon. And these fish, when we get them, they're active, they're aggressive. Now tuna fishing is a team sport. Kevin, he's our quarterback. He's the one barking orders all day long. Will, Will is our offensive lineman. And the reason why I say that is because he's the one doing all the grunt work. This team cannot be successful without a guy like Will because he's gonna be running around, make sure the gear's all working properly, taking care of our fish, netting fish, and making sure that we're all effective. Now the rest of us, we're the skill players. We're the receivers, we're the running backs. We get all the glory because we get to hold the fish up and do the grip and grin. But the reality is without the quarterback getting us out here, putting us on the spot, and the linemen make sure that we're all fishing effectively, we would not be able to have success out here. So tuna fishing is absolutely a team sport. We're gonna see if we can't find a couple of fish and when it happens, it happens fast. We get baits in the water, we try and get live bait going, we get the jigs going with iron, it's fun. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes or the patented skip beat action. Or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Okay, go sweet over here. Tip up, there you go. We just picked up and moved about five or six miles here, trying to find some fish that want to play ball. We've got one so far, but it's just a little guy. We want a lot, and we want him to be three, four times bigger than the one that we caught. Uh, there's another boat over here. We saw them on a bait stop. That means that they caught some fish on the troll and started throwing bait, started catching them on live bait. That's the ultimate goal, to get numbers you need to get on a good bait stop. Yes, you can catch two, three, four at a time on the troll, but once you get on a good bait stop, and we got a lot of excellent dead and live bait to try and keep the school up, you can start picking away at those fish really, really fast. Right 
Another little guy. Right here is when he's like right under the surface, okay? He came back. Good job. Start to follow him. Come on, boys, Cody. look up. Cody, follow him, bud. Cody. Going underneath. Going underneath. You guys walk forward. I'm in you, Jared, I think. You guys see how Cody's doing that? The fish went to the back of the boat. Cody went to the back of the boat. Go ahead and reel that gear in. That's a nice albacore. <laughs> and when you feel start swimming, one, two, three, two. <laughs> Look at that. Guys, I'm not a weak individual. I steer the boat a lot, and I cannot hold that. Ah! <laughs> Color. Never mind. Why am I fighting fish? I don't like fighting them. I like cooking them. <laughs> I already got them. Nice job. Clean gaff. Mr. Herman, well done. Yeah, buddy. Here hey, we go, base stop. Charlie, welcome to the Liberty Guy. <laughs> when they get comfortable later in the day after they've kind of come up and aren't as lethargic and sleepy or or whatever, their ambient wears off, then uh, they'll stay with the boat longer. It kind of defies all rules of everything else we do, right? You troll real fast, and when you find a fish, you stop, and you turn circles, you throw out a bunch of live bait, the ocean starts to boil, you drop live bait out, fish are swimming around, people are going crazy, stuff goes nuts, that's tuna fishing. So Kevin's marking the fish quite a bit deeper than where our bait can get to. Well, I just cast out a jig. I absolutely love fishing jigs. Because when they bite it, they bench over the rail, it's pretty fun. I'm gonna walk over here, almost to the depth. So I'm looking for a deeper lure. I was using one, uh, 112, but the fish are 60 to 120. So I want to make sure the jig is heavier so I can vertically jigging and give the right presentation so I can trigger the bite. Might be time to just put the troll gear back out. Let's see if we find a school that wants to play ball. Well, albacore fishing is simple in theory, but frantic. And frantic gets the adrenaline rushing and you've got a lot of albacore under your belt when you're not a frantic fisherman. So it's controlling the adrenaline, having situational awareness, and catching fish and getting them in the boat. That makes the difference between folks that stack a lot of fish and folks that want to stack a lot of fish. So uh, and the only way to be a good tuna fisherman is to have been a bad tuna fisherman once upon a time. And once you get the hang of it, you just rinse, wash, repeat, and do it over and over again. It's different than other types of fishing in, in the sense that it's really, really a group dynamic. And when you have a good team, man, it's a sight to see. Tuna here show up in late June through part of October. If you're lucky, they'll show up earlier in June. If you're not lucky, they show up in July, usually around mid-July. And on a short year, they'll wrap up by October 2nd. For the guys in the big boats, the commercial fishermen, the guys that, you know, live and eat this stuff year-round, they'll follow these fish to Guam, they'll follow them to the South Pacific, they'll follow them over to Japan, offload in Hawaii, and they can fish albacore six, seven, eight months out of the year. And uh, they live a good life. It's a hard life, though. They sleep out here, and they don't come back in until the boat's full or until they run out of groceries and beer. Go ahead, check in, Get a couple. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple out of that. Uh, one on bait, got a couple troll fish, and uh, yeah, it's shaping up to be a good afternoon here soon, and I think we're gonna slam. You know, so you're gonna change up your troll speed quite a bit. You're trying to figure out what speed they wanna chew, or what's? Uh, a little bit, sometimes I slow down so I can see them on the machine. It, it's, this is a high performance haul, so it's a step haul, yeah. which means it aerates my transducer, so at Watch lower, lower speeds, I can see, see the fish on there. And I do adjust my speed according to the swell because when I change directions, I slow up and speed down. But uh, I try to go between 6.7 miles per hour and maybe up to 8.1. Do you notice uh, the difference trolling with the swell or against it? If you oh, get absolutely. If, better yeah. action one way or the other? Yeah, absolutely. Trolling down sea, it, the spread looks really good and it's a better presentation for the tuna. Um, right here is not too bad. When I start banging against it, I don't like that thumping noise and I don't like the way it looks behind the boat, but sometimes they just don't care. When they're yeah hungry and they think this is the, the buffet bar, they're gonna bite anything no matter how you give it to them. Those swim baits are killing it. This one is on a uh, 12 head with a pink white swim bait, three ounce. 
Whoops, sorry, Cody. I'm sorry. As soon as we hook up on a troll fish, the best thing to do is to get bait in the water, which is what Kevin and Will are doing right now, and hopefully bring the rest of school up with them. We're getting live bait in the water now to get them all excited. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, maybe. Fish on! Gotta give them some snacks. You wanna keep them coming back. Twin bit destroyed already. Second one. Quite a fight. Yeah. There he is. Nice one. Good quality. Well done. Nice job, son. Okay, I do still have tuna here. Flashing under the boat. Let's give him a couple freebies. Cody cooked it again and he didn't want to reel it in, so I got it. Yeah, Hunter has no problems taking other nope. people's fish. He's happy about that. These things are hard to fight. A lot harder than the salmon, for sure. You don't have a good bait, you're not going to catch a good tuna. When I reach in here and I grab the liveliest one I can, just like that again, I can feel where he's at in my hand. And so I can do it pretty fast. Same deal. Rinse, wash, repeat. Bang, tail's open. And look at that, he's going straight down. He's got a blue dog, AKA a blue shark, AKA a pain in my behind. Well, that's a blue dog. And I'm not even going to try to get the three hooks that are in him out. So one of those is my hook, I'm sure. 22, we just had to go pretty good there for, I don't know, 45 minutes hey. or so. We got it? And then All right. Ran out of here. See you later, blue dog. You're lucky. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. We'll give them some deads. This is the leftover bait from yesterday we're throwing. A little guy peanut. Uh, we use a Shimano Talica 12, it's a two-speed reel. It suits our purposes great for albacore fishing. It has a free, a strike, and a full mode. There is times during a live bait frenzy that we'll swap some of these reels over and use it on darn near full lock for a bait rod as well. That's really fun when they do that. Uh, as far as the, the live bait systems, we use a blue rod, water rod, the Shimano. These are great. We have left and right handed. The Dakota, it's really easy for people to use. Most every angler in the Northwest has handled the Dakota. Our line is, is of course Maxima. The hooks we use for the live bait fishing, it's an owner cutting point size one hook, very strong. It's on a loop, it's specialized for live bait fishing. It, get, it allows it to, to freely pivot, and very, very strong. It's amazing what these hooks can do as far as holding these strong tuna, the albacore right in the mouth. In the tuna world, uh, the irons that we use, uh, we use both a Colt Sniper and then Fishfield. The Fishfield jigs are great, and the irons. They have butterfly and then both free fall in a variety of colors, and then we use a, a, a single assist hook on the top. We have other rods back there that have to be cleared. I will go clear it. Oh, I got tuna. <laughs> 
Wow, I mean, they. I can't hook them by myself. <laughs> but uh, if they hook them for me, troll them, then I get a real man. It's just as fun. Albacore tuna is known for its long fins. The difference between this fish and say a blue fin tuna, yellow fin tuna, is they have the long fins on the side. So the, the rest of the tuna world calls our tuna funny. We think their tuna are funny. So the way you could tell, say a blue fin tuna out here is it would have a short stubby little side fin there. Their eyes are particularly large. These tuna spend a lot of time down deep and they can clearly see down there. We want to catch them obviously when they're up, up high. Very fast creatures. They can swim in bursts 40 miles an hour. Very agile. They can stop on a dime. They're voracious feeders and they're opportunistic. They, and we take advantage of that with our live bait. <laughs> He's like, easy for you to say. <laughs> I can get the thumping to stop from the waves, but it means we can't stay here if we have to leave, because I'm trying to stay in the same spot. I don't like it where we're thumping the hull of the boat. The day after tomorrow is supposed to be 15 foot seas, and the day after that on Thursday is supposed to be 17 foot seas. That's the biggest ocean I've ever seen in September. But it's all blowing out of the southwest, which is really good for our tuna fishing. It brings the warm blue water in closer. So once that finally settles down and and normalizes after a day or two, it should be very, very good tuna fishing out here for probably a while until it gets rough again. We've been trying a few different colors out here so far today, and pink and white has been working the best. Now there's all sorts of different size of these tuna clones, zookers. These are the fish field style, essentially a lead head weight with a hoochie skirt around it. And we've tried different sizes and different colors and so far all of our bites on the troll have come on pink and white with a little bit heavier head than even these right here so we're going to switch it back back to this pink and white with a little twist on head it's a heavier head and then this chop it's staying down a little bit better the fish seem to be keying in on that pink and white well we're not catching a ton of fish here and a friend of mine has been fighting a big blue fin that could potentially be a state record, and he's been fighting him for probably over an hour right now. And he's about six miles from here, so you're not gonna catch a big bluefin if you don't go try for one. So where there's one, there's more. We're gonna go give it a shot. We could always troll back into this water where we're catching the albacore. And uh, we're gonna relocate. Well, we're out here in the blue water. We're. Uh, at 125, 20 something. And uh, it's not as blue as what we were in yesterday, but it's pretty blue. It's 65 degree water. Uh, the tuna are pelagic fish, which is the definition of, they live in deep blue water. And marlin, bluefin tuna, swordfish, sailfish, those are all pelagics. The blue water has a lack of chlorophyll in it. We can get them in greener water and those tend to be nice fish. They don't necessarily have to be in blue water, but you, you know you probably have your best shot on a break of green water to blue water or, or the deep purple blue water. So that's why we're here, along with the temperature break and all the bait. Uh, these fish, as the water cools and this gets greener as the fall gets colder and colder, will migrate. Uh, a lot of them will go back to Japan, the South Pacific. Some of them will actually go to Baja. These are typically what are consider, considered juvenile albacore. Um, 10 to 30 pounders with an occasional fish going 35 to, to 40. Uh, when they get in the South Pacific, they can be bigger, 60s, 70s, 80s. So 
they do this kind of a circular migration and we pick them up up here in July, August, September, October, sometimes as early as June. That was a fish. That was absolutely a fish. Well, we haven't had a bite in a while. We came up to some other water and they are down if they were going to be up to play ball this evening. Uh, it's almost four o'clock and we got a bar crossing that we need to get back in time for. Well, that is going to be it for us here today. We got a dozen fish, which honestly for this year is not all that bad. Tuna fishing, you like coming in heavy. You like coming in with 30, 40 fish. We started off the day awesome, then the bite went dead. Just absolutely fell apart for the entire fleet out here. But today, our saving grace was this lure right here. That's what we caught most of our fish on, was this swim bait here, the Pacific Chovy head, Chovy body, and that pink color. We caught some on the blue too, but that fish field, swim bait, that Chovy head and Chovy body, that's what got them. And the reason why is because these fish were staying down a little bit in the water column, and this was fishing about five feet below the surface. We only got a couple on the top. Everything else came on these guys. That's what got the party started for us. Fun day, tough day, definitely a lot rougher conditions than what we expected, than what was forecasted. And that might be why these fish went down too with a little bit of a barometer change. But any day you catch fish is a good day. Time to pack everything up. We got 68 miles to go to get back home. It's gonna be a couple hours, if not more, because it's getting a little rough out here.